Joining us now in an exclusive interview is Discover CEO, he's David Nelms. David, good to have you here with us. Nice to be here. Let's talk about the quarter because you guys did kick up your dividend a lot. Your stock's done well. Why did you feel like you had to do more for shareholders? Well, we were the first uh, company who had cut its bank dividend to fully restore the dividend, and we were able to do that because of our very strong performance, both on earnings and total capital levels. Do you expect those strong performances to continue? We certainly think that uh, we're well positioned, credit is improving, sales are growing, and absolutely, we expect to continue to performing well. What is going so right for this company? I mean, the stock up 350% over two years. Uh, you're looking at, what, 50 million card users now? I mean, what have you done right that the other guys haven't been able to do over the uh, sort of after the financial crisis? Well, certainly Discover is both a network as well as an issuer, and credit, therefore, is very important to us. And I would say we were pretty careful with our credit going into the crisis. And uh, certainly we had the customers who uh, lost their jobs or had underwater mortgages and had trouble uh, change, paying their bills for a while, but we've recognized those losses, and our customers are doing much better today. So what, what, what kind of customers are you looking at? And I'm sure Carol's about to ask the exact same very, question. What's your target audience here? Well, it's, uh, it's very much the prime market. We, uh, we, about one in four U.S. households have a Discover card, so it tends to be a very broad uh, customer base, and uh, it's families, it's, it's professionals, and, uh, you know, we're, we're very uh, careful. It's, it's basically people who love to get cash rewards. We, we're the leader in that. We started cash rewards and uh, we pay out over $700 million a year in cashback bonus awards. That appeals to a lot of people. Full disclosure, my sister has one. She loves the cashback re rewards. Let me ask you, though, what kind of trends are you seeing among consumers specifically in terms of their spending habits? Are they spending more? You're not seeing as many defaults. Give me a, give me some indications here. Well, we're seeing some encouraging signs. I would characterize it as a slow but uh, increasingly steady recovery. Our first quarter, our sales, Discover Card sales, were up 7% year over year. That's the best we've seen in a while. Uh, we're coming off of five quarters now in a row, though, of increased sales. And in the last six weeks, we've seen even better sales. So I, I attribute part of that to the rising consumer confidence. And hopefully those, those, that confidence will be here to stay. Do you worry, though, about everything that's going on in the world? We spent so much time, of course, understandably so, talking about what's going on in Japan. But there's concerns in the Middle East. There's concern, concerns over in Europe and how that might play into the consumer psyche. Certainly, you can add a gas price increases to that. There are that things to worry about, and that's why I'm a little guarded. We've had six great weeks, but, but uh, I, I'm hoping that it'll continue. So far, I, I, don't, I personally don't feel like we've had enough bad news to knock the recovery off its course. What about making it easier to pay for stuff? I mean, we were just looking at video of iPhone cases that have your logo on them, Blackberries that have your logo on them. Obviously, uh, paying for things over the Internet is becoming more and more important. What are you doing to make it easier for the consumer to buy stuff? Well, one of the things we're particularly focused on is mobile commerce, and we're doing a number of things in this area uh, where you can tap your, your, your uh, card, uh, you know, put a sticker on your phone, tap that at a point of sale and buy things from Best Buy and, and other retailers. And we're also partnering with uh, ISIS, which is a joint venture between T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T. And we're very optimistic that over time, consumers will increasingly pay using their phones and that our the, will be the I, network. I've got to say, I've been covering over. phone companies for for a long time. We've, I've been hearing this forever. <laughs> Deutsche Telekom was talking about this. You mentioned T-Mobile back in 2000. When is it really going to happen? When can I walk to a supermarket and just chuck my phone at the cashier and, and make it work? Well, I, I've been doing it for the last year. Some of our customers, you can get a sticker today from Discover. Any of our customers can put it on their phone, and you can walk into Home Depot, Best Buy, McDonald's, a host of major retailers, uh, over 100,000 retail, retailing locations across the U.S. today, and do exactly that. Now, what I look forward to is the day when all merchants have those uh, wireless terminals and when all phones have this capability built in, because I think that'll be great for Discover. David, you know, it's funny. On our conference call, when we talked about that you were coming on, we said, you know, who really has a Discover card? Because you guys are kind of under the radar. Yet I'm looking at, you know, projected numbers for 2010 in terms of Amex, and you guys, you guys are pretty comparable, I think, in terms of the number of cards. Does it bother you that you're not kind of always talked about when it comes to the card companies as much, or you don't care because you're obviously delivering the numbers? Well, I think, I think recently we've really been taking our profile up. We've We've only been a public company for about the last three years. That has helped raise our profile 
profile. We've got some great commercials. We're the sponsor of the Orange Bowl. So we've really try, been trying, to, you know, what bothers me or what excites me maybe is the opportunity to take, take up the profile and to is to that get, important you think in terms of leveraging what I you think guys it is have? because we offer the best service in the industry in addition to cash rewards and I want to have all consumers have access to that can you match though uh, a visa a MasterCard I mean can you get to that level of uh, recognition well, we're very close today. We're one of the most recognized brand names in financial services, and, and Visa and MasterCard are a very high hurdle. Um, the, the great thing about Discover, though, is we have direct relationships with merchants and cardholders. We, we're vertically integrated, so we do much more th than just Visa and MasterCard. So I want to offer the full range of products and services to consumers in direct banking and payments. Talking about the relationship with merchants, we've been talking a lot about the Durban Amendment to the Dodd-Frank, and which which wants to cap debit card swipe fees charged to merchants. We're are you guys on this? Well, I'm not in favor of price caps. Uh, I am in favor of competition being the answer. And we, one of the things Discover owns is Pulse, which is one of the largest de debit networks. I have 4,500 banks and financial institutions who issue on that network. Mm. So we are concerned for our bank customers. I, I hope that we'll end up with the right balance of things over time. And in the meantime, we're very focused on using this as an opportunity to provide more competition so we don't need price controls. If there are price controls, what's going to happen then in the industry? What do you see? A lot of the banks are saying, well, we're going to charge our customers in other ways. How do you see that that would potentially play out? Well, I am concerned because I think that the, the price controls proposed don't even cover all the costs. And no business can operate below cost. And so you're starting to see some of the banks uh, charge fees or, or have mm -hmm. other ways to make up to, to cover their cost and ultimately their profits. Um, so I, I... Hang on, you're I, saying the government would implement inefficient price controls? <laughs> I, you know, I generally... Our sarcastic moment of the day. that's not the case. <laughs> Again, I think competition is the answer, not price controls. And uh, well, well, how would it make you do business differently if we had those price controls in place? Well, the the part of the the amendment, the proposal that affects us probably more directly is the requirement to have multiple. Uh, competitive cards um, mm -hmm. networks on a card. And so that's an opportunity for Pulse to be that second option on many cards. So that's the biggest thing that, that, that we see. The other thing is we will certainly try to be as efficient as we can for all our banks to, to try to, to make this uh, great business continue to prosper. Five seconds when all is said and done, do you think it'll get through? <laughs> I think there's a reasonable chance that it could be at a minimum delayed. Okay. I think there's been a lot of concern. It never had hearings. Uh, I think the more things come out, the more people realize this is a complicated and very important issue. It affects right. almost everyone in America. Uh, we need to make sure we get it right. All right, David, good getting some time with you. Thank you so much. Great David Nelbs, CEO of Discover Financial Services. Thank you both.